wake up, top of the morning, the bacon is crispy, the coffee is pouring, my meditation is peeling an orange, the bank says I'm already scoring, I got a parking spot right outside, step into my brand new ride, all we ever get is green lights, the blue skies, this is gonna be the best day ever, you got me looking so fresh, I can't get no better, baby I'm a T-Rex, ready to rumble, ready to flex, I'm the king of the jungle. Shake up, I got a red fruit smoothie, James Brown bumping like I'm living in a movie, look at me, I do the cha-cha-cha, look at me, I sing na na na, tippy tap tap like I'm Dick Van Dyke, Chim Chim I need you to be by my side, spoonful of sugar gonna go with it, oh baby pass me the butter gonna roll with it, this is gonna be the best day ever, you got me looking so fresh, I can't get no
Sorry, Marco, I forgot to... Uh... Oh. <laughs> oh, there was something I forgot to do. Sorry. We didn't hear you, yo, yo Marco. There you are. <laughs> I didn't switch up the thing. My bad. My bad. I knew I forgot no something. No problem. I knew I forgot something. It's all good. We're all here. We're all... It's amazing. Ah, oh, how is everyone doing on this Saturday? Welcome, everyone. I see... Uh, um, so, Aki is here from Japan, Patrick. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Japan. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find my Aiki. thing. There we go. All Aiki, right, Aki, you're a moderator now. Yeah, Aki wow. is uh, so Aki is one of the folks on the Power BI Cat team who lives in Japan. Um, so he joined he the team not too me. long ago. Yes. I met Aki. When did we when did we meet him? A month ago. Or it was so in ago, June. A month or so ago. Yeah, June at the in offsite. June, and he gave and he gave me these banana Kit Kats. Yes. And they were bananas. And <laughs> they were was bananas. Awesome. They were what, bananas. And, what they was, was the awesome. reason why he gave you those? I don't remember. He wanted to hear you say that's bananas. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's not efficient. Oh. But, what the but, but French we owe him. But we owe Bam. him. This is bananas. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but we do owe him. We do owe, yes. we do owe Aki a video uh, for the next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Group, yeah. And we will yeah. get that done. We promise. We so, promise. Glad, we glad you were here, Aki. Glad you were here, Aki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and amazing because the time there. So for folks in like Asia and uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand area, like that is that is dedication. And there's there's fo always folks here from like Australia and whatnot. Chris is a pick a uh, pick a button, buddy. Yeah, I button. know, I know. I couldn't remember which one was. I need like little icons on the. This is bananas. I know what it is now. She's like, pick oh a my gosh, that's not efficient. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, everyone, uh, if you are new uh, to the live stream or Gynecube in general, put hashtag new in the chat. We always love seeing the new folks here. Um, that is always uh, always great to see. And Chewy, I saw you came in a little late. I don't know if you heard the song in the intro. Tough act to follow. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was there for you, buddy. Mm -hmm. The voice. Oh, you want the voice? No. Pa Patrick no, doesn't want the voice. No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so also uh, shout out to the members of Guy in a Cube. Uh, we appreciate everything you do. You help us and support us with what we do here on the channel. So thank you very much for that. Uh, if you see folks with the green name or the Guy in a Cube icon next to their name, those are members of Guy in a Cube. So thank you so much for that. If you want to learn more about it, check out the link on the screen or hit the join button down below. No commitment required. Uh, just a big thank you. Um, thanks for Thanks for being here. Um, all right, let's check out the news, and then uh, Marco will uh, will get going here. Um, let's see, let's see, where does it start? Where did it start? Where's the first one? Uh, so Rajesh is new, uh, Anka is new, and the member as well. Thank you for that. Uh, Michael is new. A team, no voice. Yeah, see, there's there's everyone. Way to get the chat going on the whole voice thing. Um, Ah, Chewie, you joined right then. That's awesome. Uh, Elson is new from Brazil. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Gabrielle's from uh, Buenos Aires. Welcome. Uh, James is old. Welcome to the club. Bob Eater's older. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Tom's new to Tech Studio 3. Love it. Uh, I want to say that's Joshua's new. Welcome. Uh, Nitin is new from India. Excellent. Brandon, Frisco, Texas. Shout out to all my Texas folks. Woohoo. Howdy, y'all. Uh, and then uh, Keo oh. is new from Minnesota with membership last week. Thank you so much. Thank you so ah, much. There you go. Welcome, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Chat Master C, the team, no control over Adam's voice. <laughs> she moved back downstairs, by the way. The, her office set up. Did she? It's, it's not, I can't, Did she? she's not here anymore. She moved it back downstairs. She's. She, she said she didn't me. like come she up here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I smell I or something. Her. I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't want to come up there with you yeah. either. I mean, yeah. I want to have my own space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, Wasfi is new from Saudi Arabia. Welcome. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, and Benjamin is new hey. from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, where do you get that? So where do you get that shirt from? This one. 
there's there's some buzz in the chat about this shirt. So What's there? let's just let's just get that out the way before uh, Marco does so, his okay. studio. So I did a video on this. Hey Alex, if you can find my shirt video and drop that in the in the chat. That's an old video. Um uh, this is an example of AI at its best and uh, strong uh, targeting from Facebook marketing. Um, so that, that, is, that is what these are. So there's random sites, like lots of different sites sell shirts. Um, so some of them go down very quickly because copywriting and all of that, but I grab them before they get shut down and, uh, you know, move on to the next one. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if you search i guarantee if you search for like ecto one and pac-man ghost shirt like you'll probably find it um so like go to the search engine of your choice but when you go to bing search for ecto one and uh pac-man ghost and you will find the shirt i, I found it yeah i found there it. you go and you went to bing right i did i go, yeah. went to people bing. don't think marco do you get this like yeah. people don't believe us when we say that we use bing they don't believe we us use? Instead we of Google, sorry, instead of Google, we use Bing for the search engine. <laughs> they don't believe us. They think we're just saying that to be funny. Like, no, we like that's no, we use Bing. I, I I tell you what I do. I, I always so I have two two different browsers. <laughs> one is uh, configured with Google, one with Bing, so I can compare the the, the results. And this is what I do. And uh, okay. Of course, I will not tell you which one I trust more, but. Guess what? Oh, well, I think you just did with that statement. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, all right. Well, Marco, that, so thank you for being here again. I, I feel like you're just part of the family, Marco. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, if you don't know who Marco is, let me, uh, let me put, where is my, there we go. Uh, so uh, Marco is and Alberto Ferrari are part of SQL BI. So go check out their website. They do a bunch of books, videos, articles. Uh, so you may uh, recognize the Definitive Guide to DAX. Uh, it's an amazing book, uh, as well as DAX patterns and all sorts of great content and resources for DAX and data modeling. And Marco, you had a recent announcement last Wednesday. What was, what yes. was that? Well, Tell we actually, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm the marketing person in this yes. case because I, I contribute to DAX Studio a little bit in terms of code because uh, most of the development is uh, made by Darren Gospel, who lives in Melbourne and joined recently. The, He's the, on the, the Power BI Cat team as well. Your same team, yeah. Yes. And, and Darren is the main author of DAX Studio. And 18 months ago, and I'm not, I'm not kidding, uh, we started to say we should do DAX Studio 3. W w what can we do in DAX Studio 3? And we said, okay, we, we need a new UI. We need something, I mean, the, the product is so widely used that we need uh, a serious user interface. Uh, you know, it, it has to be something that is, oh, this is open source. No, this is a good product. And uh, this is what we did. So Daniele Perilli, who works with me, helped us uh, designing the UI, the icons, the style. And of course, there, was, there has been a big uh, change in many, many details to support the dark theme. So now you can change between light and dark mode, which is the more visible thing. But of course, underneath, there, are, there have been many different changes uh, and quality improvement that actually you know, makes the, 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 um, the product more stable, I will say. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so before we, I know uh, I'm going to ask you in a second to kind of show us around Dax Studio 3. Yep. Uh, before we do that, though, I do want to kind of make sure folks understand the rules for the questions. So we are going to go to some questions after Marco kind of shows us around. Uh, we will be prioritizing questions about Dax Studio 3, uh, Dax data modeling, performance, those types of things. Um, so get your questions in the queue. Chatmaster C is standing by. Put Q colon in front of the question so that Chatmaster C can uh, get it queued up. Please do not spam the question. We have a three strikes rule here on Gyna Cube. If you do spam the question, either Chatmaster C or one of our lovely moderators, except Patrick uh, and Marco in this case, uh, will not uh, or will be uh, putting you in a timeout. Uh, so please, please, please follow the rules. Uh, and uh, yeah, everything will be great. Uh, so Q colon or it doesn't get brought up. Uh, please also know we never get to all the questions. So if we don't get to your question, come back next time, not with the DAX question next time because Alberto Cairo will be on. Um, I don't think he knows DAX. 
uh, but uh, but yeah, so we'll get we'll get it next time. So apologies on that. Um, all right, super chats always take priority throughout the stream. So if you do have a burning question, make sure you put that type in that question when you do the super chat. All right, Marco. Okay. Why don't so you give us a you, tour? Yeah, let's uh, go to my desktop. Yes. So I have uh, my um, installation. I mean, this is Dax Studio that I just opened, and the biggest. Uh, uh, feature I think is this one, right? So, when you change the application application theme, when you see this uh, this icon now, we we are using the, the by default we start with the setting that you have in Windows. So if you have a dark setting in window, you should start with the dark setting. This is an enforcement of the light mode, and now we go dark mode. So in dark mode, everything has been designed to to be consistent, and so you see that the icons and and many details could change depending on the light and the right mode so you can imagine that the, the, the work has been huge because this in you know involves all the parts of the user interface the menu every part of the configuration and so on and so why it seems uh, simple actually the application never has been designed with this in mind so a number of changes has been required for that now Besides, and I will switch to light mode because it's uh, the one that I'm more used to, to use, um, the majority of the improvements are in the area of, uh, let's say, user experience improvement. Uh, let me show this with an example. I have a, a query uh, here, which uh, is a, a query that I can run. Uh, this is a part of the query that uh, we are using for for a new training we're writing and this is the result and you see that the query took two seconds and something and so usually when when you investigate the query you you enable several time in query plan and then you clear a cache and run so you will see that now in a short amount of time i will click one two three clear and run and you see that as soon as this is ready I click run now for those of you that did this in Dax Studio version 2 you know that it is impossible to do what I did now because if you don't wait one or two seconds more you got some error <laughs> and now this usually works better and we have a new redesign presentation of the data for the server timings in the query plan you will see that there are a number of new buttons here that before have been you know uh, were, were presented in the in the ribbon now Everything is more consistent. And so, for example, I can enable all the internal events and cache events. I can change the visualization where I want to store this. It, everything is, you know, easier to access. And as you notice, the, we have this area, the waterfall, which is particularly interesting because it shows when the storage engine query has been executed compared to the overall execution of the of the query. So you see that this query took almost four seconds and this storage engine query has been executed almost two seconds after the first four, which means that actually the, the, the formula engine did something to prepare data for the next call and then the next call has been executed and then something else happened in the formula engine. So this is also helping finding uh, storage engine query that could run in in parallel not something that happens often yet but it will happen more frequently in the future and so i mean we didn't add any new feature but it's just an improvement of what we already had we have something similar in the query plan if you know something about the query plan you know that these uh i, I think you're the only one that, marco that knows anything about that okay query plan. sorry <laughs> uh, no i don't think so but anyway the, the query plan shows now with these uh, uh, highlighted in bold lines, uh, the lines that actually are consuming the result of the storage engine queries. And another important innovation here is that when you click on an element, for example, let's say that you want to see, okay, this pool iterator is consuming something that comes from this other hierarchy of uh, nodes. And you see that this line goes until the end. So it, it means that there is nothing in the middle. But if you, let's go here. If I go here, I can see that when I scroll down, I know I'm still in the branch of the inner course of this node. 
which which is what I what I had at the beginning. So there are other minor details, but this is something that has been uh, you know improved in terms of presentation. And finally, we also have a different way to manage the clear cache on run. As you see, clear on run is now a setting that you can enable or disable. Thank, thank you, by uh, the way. Bef <laughs> before it was a non-intuitive way to yes. do this uh, without a button here. And probably the query builder is also uh, improved. Uh, the query builder, let, let's go here, is better. The query builder is just a better UI, so you can just say, okay, I want to group Ooh, by Patrick, brand. Look, it's Patrick, look, Patrick friendly. The category, the category should be <laughs> is some value. I don't remember which category we have, so it's better. But I don't use the category. The color is better because I remember the color. Color should be, for example, blue. And then you say, okay, I want to include a measure. Let's go in a measure. And of course, I took for granted, you, you notice that there are different icons. You see the data type of each column. When you, when you go over a column, you see the preview. Again, features that were already here, but now they are more um, usable. And let's say that uh, I want to include the margin and the margin percentage, and I click update, and this shows me the result. I go here and I go run and I can see the, the result of the query. But of course you can say auto update and of course now every time you change something uh, this query is modified but of course you have to click run because otherwise it could be too slow. Small improvements, small things but that helps you being more productive with the with uh, with Duck Studio. And this in you know this actually is uh, all these improvements are scattered everywhere. I, I, I think that every every single feature has had an impact about that. And we have been using this for a few months now internally. We didn't do a, you know a beta a public beta because we, we we wanted to do the you know the big announcement. Big reveal. <laughs> the big reveal. And and yeah and and uh, and so now we already received a few bugs we we already solved a few things but luckily nothing nothing big so actually mm -hmm. I, I think that the you know most of the people can use it without any problem and i, I think nice. next week that we would see already a, a new update nice nice just cranking them out so chat's going bananas about it uh, a lot yeah. of love a lot of love i appreciate you showing where the uh, toggle is for the dark mode i know there was some chat about that as well going on okay um, so that's good to socialize that. What's up, oh, I forgot. What? What? One important oh. thing. Um, if you go to DAXstudio.org, the documentation is brand new and, and, and is better organized. Uh, and, and so if you miss something, just look at the documentation. Uh, Darren didn't complete all the, uh, you know, you will, see all, you will still see a few old bitmaps, old screenshots, but the organization is, is very good. This is much better. Ooh, look at that. It's pretty. Yep. It's pretty. Look at okay. that. All right. I just hear Patrick clickety so, All right. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so a lot of people, the report builder, the report yep. builder, I mean, uh, the query builder, it's been there. Query builder. It's been there for a bit. The query builder has been there for a bit. Did a I video, know. and I think a lot of people didn't watch the video that I did on it because... It's because it nobody about... watches your videos. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know, uh, I know. <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody watches. Hashtag Team Patrick. I think it was in the <laughs> in the in the in the uh, in focus on paginated reports because I used yeah. it to show you how you could use it to build um, you know your query for a paginated report. And I think a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm not watching that. It's paginated reports. Sorry, Chris Finland. Um, but yeah. Anyway, and then the other thing is, um, heck, I forgot. Heck, I forgot. Anyway, you broke me out. But keep <laughs> sorry, going. sorry. <laughs> so, that's a it's a little it's a little joke between Patrick and I. Oh, all right. Awesome. Anything else, Marco, or or do you want to just jump to the questions? Let's jump to the question. I uh, right. I love answering questions. All right. So uh, have. <laughs> so I think uh, Matthias was going to start us off. So uh, this is uh, this was. Uh, the you had two Matthias right off the bat, so we're gonna go. I'm gonna grab okay. both, but I, I want to do this one first. Um, is it true that DAX Studio Three works on a crypto AI blockchain basis? <laughs> no. 
I, I just, let me it's not even an it depends? <laughs> like, no, it depends? No, no uh, so okay. th there are two things I want to say now. One is that if you didn't watch the video about the announcement, please watch it. Because the, the, the minute, the, <laughs> it's seven minutes and a half. And the first half is the real announcement. The second half is yeah. uh, the explanation of the announcement. And you will see how we consider uh, the, you know, the marketing stuff. We, we made a consideration about the future version of Dax Studio 4. So if you didn't watch it, please watch it because you will discover why the answer is no. Because as I said in the, on Twitter, I said, uh, look, spoiler number one, uh, any question about AI, uh, the answer will be no. But I love AI. So this is a spoiler number two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, Donald, Donald said the ending was great of the video. So. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, all right. So we'll grab Matthias's uh, Roku. So it was funny, too, because Matthias added that second question about the blockchain. Patrick, right? He's like, what is that? I'm like, that's a joke, man. It's a joke. <laughs> like, don't, a like joke. Matthias is in on it. <laughs> so it was funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is Matthias's real work question. Marco, the query plan adds a line to figure out the yep. children nodes of the selected item. Could you explain the phrase with an example? I am new to Dex Studio. I I think I already shown it. So if, if you want to go back to, to Duck Studio one second, it's exactly the, the, the example I show now, uh, which is the following. So let me close the query builder and go back to the query plan. So uh, the query plan is a list of nodes that are representing a hierarchical way. And so, for example, when you see that there is a spool iterator, the spool iterator is actually consuming the result of the, the uh, indented node, but sometimes there are there are um, uh, there are operations that require multiple multiple uh, this one that they require multiple arguments. For example, look at this cross apply. This cross apply has one children's pool iterator. This is like the first argument of cross apply, and if you scroll down, this is the second argument of pool uh, of cross apply. So if we found this line, it's very hard. Well, I was used to keep the mouse. Of here just to figure out what is the next parameter and so now this helps me understanding where the, the next parameter is i also have seen a question about how, can we represent the query plan or in a graphical way um, the answer is potentially yes but it would be very 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 useless because the query plan is <coughs> never is not certainly complete when the query plan has more than ten thousand lines uh, it's truncated, so we don't know all the lines, and the query plan could be very, very, very verbose. So you, if you imagine to represent 10,000 nodes in a query plan in a graphical way, nobody's going to read it. So it's a, it's a complex discussion. I Potentially, it could be possible, to be honest, but we should have more information in a query plan that we don't have. So say we all. Yep. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, moving on, uh, Gustavo, uh, any plans? Oh, wait, Patrick. Oh, sorry, I muted you because you, you were did flipping you, around. And I did mute you. You were making you all sorts me. of noise. You muted me. I did. I oh, have the power. Me. All right. yes. So if you're interested in learning <laughs> Learn to mute yourself, plan, by the way. <laughs> chapter 19 in this book. Chapter 19 yeah. in this book talks about the query plan. Yes. I saw a lot of people, what's a node? What's this? What's that? You got to go read chapter 19. I actually read chapter 19. I still don't know much about the query plan because it's a lot to take in. You probably have to read it about three or four times, but it is good. It is a good chapter. So, yeah. <laughs> people in chat yelling at you because you were muted. And I'm like, it was me. It was me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, any any plans for Dax Studio to show? Oh, we already answered that. Uh, like data flows. I, I okay. just answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just answer. Sorry, I'm not. I don't read ahead. So, um, uh, any uh, let's see. Matthew's got any general Dax memory optimization tips uh, when trying to create a local calculated table from a remote analysis services data set. Keep hitting uh, the 10 gig memory limit on Power BI service. That's, so uh, you should try to avoid that yes. because uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess that <laughs> I, mean, I guess that you're using the um, the um, composite, composite model. model. Yeah, so yeah. You, you, if you have a composite model, you get data from a, a remote model, and then you combine the data with local data. It's fine. It works, but 
the data are the data is moved in an uncompressed way, and you lose the main features you have uh, in, uh, in Power BI, which is VertiPack, which get, keeps the data in a compressed way and, and makes joins in a compressed way. So there are a number of optimization that you lose, and of course, you have limits that Microsoft put to avoid that you stall the entire memory of a server from other nodes running Power BI. So that's uh, that's life. You have limits. Yeah, I will. I will say actually, <laughs> you do have limits. Um, uh, I actually like Matthew's question, um, and, and Matthew, thanks for putting that out there because this is an example of where it's really easy to do these things without knowing like the implications of that or why it's happening. And so, yeah. for me, this is a stepping off question into learning like how things work internally and and to explore like yep. you know best practices, things of that nature. So, so Matthew. Uh, please, please dig into that more and uh, explore uh, some of the numbers. And I, I remember we have, uh, I think, um, Alberto recorded an unplugged video about the composite model explaining what happens. Yes. When, when you when you join remote tables and depending yeah. on the operation, you you could see a large materialization. Then. Yep. So. Yep. 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 So hey, Alex, if you can. Uh, Maybe find that video and drop that in the chat. That would be great. Um, Gabrielle, thank you for becoming a new visitor. Very much appreciate, or uh, a new member uh, at the visitor tier. Thank you very much. Very much pre appreciated. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Naresh, um, is query folding supported with Databricks? Oh, I didn't even. Uh, I have uh, no idea. Yeah, 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 that's not a Marco question. Uh, Patrick, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, if you can do direct query, should we be. Um, should be. It should be. It should, should be. be. Right? I'm pretty well, sure direct query. It depends. Source. Alex, will, it Alex depends. Will... So it depends on the it function that on... you're doing in Power Query. Yeah. You can break it. Depends folding. on what you're doing in Power Query. You can break it. But but is it supported? It's not. A, is it depends. Technically, right? No, wait, Kevin. Sure. Don't don't say one dollar yet. Don't say one dollar, <laughs> because if not one dollar, because Databricks has SQL support, and so it should be a foldable source. So I'm not going right. to take the dollar back. Back at zero. Right. Back at zero. Right. Back at zero. Back at zero. All right. Mark's uh, got an interesting question for, for the chat, actually. Uh, if you could have only one external tool, would you pick DAX Studio 3 or Tabular Editor? Th or Yeah, or Tabular Editor 3. <laughs> Marco, what are, Patrick, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Because uh, oh man, uh, there's there's stuff that each one offers that is different. Yeah, but they, they are different, and to be honest, um, uh. well, Kevin, the premise is you could only have one. Which one do you choose? Yeah, you can only. Well, it depends. <laughs> Chewy said it depends. <laughs> for okay, for I. I, I, I <laughs> I, I will be honest. For what I do daily, I would choose Dax Studio because I mainly I, do same optimization. Here. Same but here. for most of the people, I think the tabular editor is more important because the optimization should be a small part of the of their daily yes. um, the, the daily work. The daily work should not be optimized yeah. things. It's just a few people that do this, a, yes. you know, all day long. Now. It's useful when you have to optimize, but hopefully you don't have to optimize often. So probably tabulator is what I will use more frequently in, in a regular job, but uh, I, I would like to use Dex Studio too. Yes. I, I will say for the three people you see on the screen, um, the answer is going to be Dex Studio 3 uh, because that's what we use yeah. the most in our day-to-day -day, because that's just what we're doing. We're doing more optimization than we are creating models. So yeah, I 100% agree with you, uh, uh, Marco. If if you're an enterprise data modeler, right? If you're designing enterprise data modelers, you're going to choose Tabular yeah. Editor, tabular right? Editor. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. us, yeah. right? What we do well, but, is well, oh, but Alex, yeah. Alex, that's the nature of the. It depends. If you're doing development, it's Tabular Editor. If you're doing opt, that it depends yeah. on which one yeah. you're doing. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. <laughs> so it All depends right. if I'm going to say we should do this dollar, right? It depends. Hey, you know what the beautiful thing is in the real world and the reality is? We can have both. So. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. And more than two. Depends. More than two. More than two. Three, four. More than it two. How many of you are? Because you could have Bravo it also. Yep. Ah, uh, it's going to come up. Bravo's <laughs> about to come up. 
Yeah, it's, uh, we, we're working yeah. on the last feature that we'll complete, and then we will re Wait. we will launch the the, the version one zero uh, later. Keep keep paying attention. Come. There's a question. There's a well, question. I know, but yeah. I want to I want to. You're bringing it up now. I don't want to lose it. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, I, I saw it. I saw it. Uh, and James Ward, yeah, I got stacks. I got ones everywhere, man. I got ones all over my uh, office. I got dollar bills everywhere. All right, I don't see it. <laughs> we lost the question. I don't. I don't, I don't, I, well, I don't see a question for Bravo. <laughs> oh, no worry. All right, all right. Going back to the queue. Going back. To the queue. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> is, oh, this is interesting. Rajesh has got an interesting question. Are there any plans to converge Dax Studio and Tabular Editor? No, mm -hmm. but for us, See, so I knew the answer. let me enter the question. So <laughs> why it's technically possible to merge the two is not feasible for technical or economic reasons. And let me explain. First, technical reason, Tabular Editor is written using um, Windows Forms. DAC Studio is written using WPF. So converging the two tools means doing a huge amount of work just to, you know, having a single user interface. And the second is the problem about the economic model. DAC Studio is a free open source tool that is supported by volunteers and sponsors. And please donate if you use DAC Studio and it is uh, useful for your job and especially for your company. What I suggest evaluate what is the value, the commercial value of a product like Dex Studio, and donate 10% per, per year to Dex Studio, because this way we will fund further development. Uh, so far, we, we, it's hard to find people, like in other open source projects, that have uh, coding skills and they will love to work on this project, because usually the users of Dex Studio are not developers. Uh, so this is different from, uh, you know, libraries uh, for uh, other things. There are many developers that are interested in developing libraries for other tools, but when it comes to Power BI or business intelligence stuff, the number of coders is small. So uh, this will help further development and DuckStudio is and will continue to be free. So there is no reason why DuckStudio should be uh, on sale. Tabular Editor has a different uh, business model where we have a free version that has all the features and there is a, 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 a more advanced version that is just more productive. It doesn't have features that are impossible. I mean, it doesn't provide access to features that are impossible to use in Tabular Editor 2, but all the features that you have in Tabular Editor 3 are about the productivity. So if you don't have money, um, okay, that's fine. It means that probably you are not interested in saving time. But if you can save time and you do this for a living, probably the investment for Tabular Editor makes sense because you will save money at the end of the day. And so this will fund the development of Tabular Editor and also the development of Tabular Editor 2 because at the end, Tabular Editor 2 is still maintained and updated. Um, I don't see how these two models can converge because from one side you have a company and from the other side you have uh, just uh, volunteers. And by the way, Tabular Editor is one of the sponsors of Duck Studio. So actually, if you buy Tabular Editor 3, you are actually sponsoring and, and, and funding Duck Studio. So I think that the answer is, the simple answer is no, not in the foreseeable future. Something big should happen. I don't see why this should happen and, and yeah. how and when. Yep. Cool. I agree. All right. Uh... Let's go back to the queue. Uh, Chris Finland is gracing us with his presence, um, and he has a wonderful question. Um, yep. Where are you in the development of MDX Studio 1.0? Uh, we are waiting for Moshe to send us <laughs> the code. <laughs> Actually, MDX Studio is, uh, is uh, a... a it's not open source, right? It's uh, it's uh, closed source code yeah. uh, development by Moshe Pazumaski, so it's not possible to further develop it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Sandeep, uh, does Marco use dark theme? I think we could have nope. picked up on that earlier when he was switching back. Nope. So I, no. I could I could add it there, you know. Uh, technically, um. It's uh, for 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 me. It's better to use uh, the light mode for 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 uh, you know 
the view. Um, but I, I think it's personal because of the, the, the research I, 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 I have seen says that the light mode is better and dark mode is uh, worse, especially if, you, if the, 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 the room is completely dark, the dark mode is, uh, is pushing, is asking more to, to, to your retina, but mm. I don't want to enter into this discussion. I'm not a doctor. I just say, look, I, I, I see that it, it was better for me. So, Dr. Marco, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, let's see here. Uh, Evan, uh, will I ever be able to do DAX Studio 3 metrics over multiple workspace data sets? I'm thinking like at the same time? Technically, when you connect DAX Studio to one database, you have a single connection with one database and one uh, workspace, technically. So in order to change, uh, yeah, no, uh, the, the answer is no, because technically a connection is to a workspace which corresponds to a server in analysis services. And within that server or that workspace, you choose a database. But the way that Studio is designed, and I think every, every connection it has to work, uh, you connect to a single database, your, your, your query. So no, I, I don't, but I don't understand what you could what you would yeah. like to do yeah. with multiple? Why would you want to yeah, do what's it? the goal? Yeah. What's the goal? Yeah. Yep. Now, well, so I could think of maybe a scenario of you're trying to do like your own quasi uh, capacity metrics look. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. every data set yeah. Yeah. within that capacity, but then I'm like, uh, like how do you, so like that becomes problematic. I, I, if I can add one thing, I. So, uh, never say never. So maybe tomorrow, a developer that has a lot of time will join the group and will develop a, a, a lot of amazing features. But from my point of view, the only features that are supposed to be developed within DAX Studio are features that are used by a large number of people or by those people that develop it. That's, uh, that's how it works. The feature described now is a feature that will be interesting for large companies and probably could be the target for a commercial tool, why a bunch of people that will never use it should develop it for free? Just so it's, it's unlikely yeah. to happen. Yeah. Yep, and then Evan came back and said, yeah, he's trying to do uh, capacity analytics. There's a capacity metrics app. Let's get Patrick started on that one. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's, a, it's an economic <laughs> problem. So even though we like community, we like everything, but it's always a question of resources. You, you have resources, and in this case time, if not money, and you have a limited amount of resources, you have to prioritize them. And the stakeholder of DAX Studio are the people who develop it. So why should they care about a feature that they are, they are not interested to? If many people would be interested, that could be different, but at that point, either someone sponsor it, and so convince the people that will spend time in other, in other ways, or it's not gonna see the light. Yeah, yep, yep. All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Lance is asking, does De uh, DAX Studio 3 have a CLI and can it be used to automate or in automated CI pipelines? So there, there is some, the, if you look at the, the DAX Studio has a number of um, common line uh, okay. Okay. parameters and, and, and there is a, an idea about something. I don't remember exactly what which part, because this is a, not a, a new question. So the idea was to, uh, I want to get this DAX query, I want to run this DAX query against this uh, database, I want to retrieve the, the result in a CSV file and do some operations. Well, okay, so uh, it's technically probably possible to do that. I'm not sure that today it works. This way, there are a number of items open about this uh, uh, feature request. I, I don't know if it will always, I mean, if it never will get enough priorities, because in my opinion, it's just a small step, then you need other features. So is it, once you have the common line version, the next step is okay, but now, then you need a number of other features that you don't have now to support the autom automation of your uh, pipeline. And maybe that at that point, you don't want to use DAX Studio, you want to use another tool like 
PBI tools, for example, that is designed to work in that environment. And so, I, I don't know, it's, it's an area that we're to explore, but again, the question is an economic question. What is the economic model to support that? We found something for Dark Studio that can be supported long term because there are companies that you know actively sponsor the tool because it's in their interest to support those features. If you don't have a good economic model, and any new tool that appears tomorrow will could be could be not no, could no longer work in two months or two years. So, are you going to invest your pi your time creating a pipeline based on a tool that is not certain you know not sure to be supported in the future? It, it's a risky business. So for this reason, I always highlight, guys, you have to understand. Even though it's free, there should be a sustainable economic model behind. Otherwise. You don't want to do the investment. Yep. All right. Uh, Chris Wagner has got a good question. If I only had 15 minutes to look at new features in DAX Studio, what new feature should I review? Okay. We don't have new features. Actually, we only have improvements. Uh, well, so, so the answer there is dark mode. <laughs> dark mode. Dark mode is, uh, <laughs> the, is the new feature. Yeah. I, I, I'll if rephrase this. If someone's new, just coming into DAX Studio, where where's the big value for them? Like, what should they really take advantage of at DAX Studio? I'll, I'll rephrase it. So DAX Studio, so if you learn DAX Studio for the first time, I think that the best way to understand DAX Studio is to capture the queries that you have in a, a Power BI report, run them in DAX Studio, and try to understand DAX by going through the steps that are made. Because you created a measure, but DAX Studio shows a completely different reality. It's like, you know, you take the red pill or the blue pill in Matrix. It's the same thing. So <laughs> when, when, when you use DAX Studio, you see what happens. You see what is actually happening. Yes. And, and this can, and, and of course, then you can, or you can use DAX Studio to learn how to create queries for your report, maybe in Excel, maybe in Report Builder. Uh, there are many, many different uh, uses, and I, I think that the the first one is to is, is a tool that can help you learn in DAX. Yes. And yeah. yeah. And this is why when we talk about I, like if a given function is you know giving you some outcome, it's taking so much time. Um, well, yeah. cool. Then you, we can use the server timings to go review that and then play and try something else. And I love the ability to bring in like an inline measure into that query from the visual so we can do that in a non-destructive yeah. manner yeah. and try things out and see what yeah. performs better. Yeah. So yep. I, I did a video exactly. a while ago about why I use DAX Studio. And I mean, it, it makes writing, I'm not saying it teaches you how to write DAX. It makes writing DAX easier um, because of all the IntelliSense and then all the functions. There's two tabs at the top, one for the function and DMVs. The one for the function is so critical because you can hover. It shows the two tips. You can right click it. It takes you to DAX.guide. Um, it's like all encompassing. It's almost a comprehensive place for DAX. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, what I, that's how I look at it. Right? Yep. Cool. All right. Moving on. There's a lot of questions. Um, There's a lot of questions. <laughs> I just keep um, watching them. I keep watching them. I know. <laughs> All right. Chris Jones. Chris always brings uh, some good questions and thoughts. Uh, can we see an example yeah. usage of evaluate and log? So evaluate and log is a new function that has been introduced in a Power BI desktop in uh, August 2022. Two. Yep. Uh, today, Dex Studio doesn't have a support for this uh, function. The function generates a new SQL Server Provider event that can be detected by a tool that can display what happens when you execute a certain uh, uh, DAX expression. Um, uh, Jeffrey Wang. Yeah. Who hey, is Alex, one can of you the get the link for Jeffrey Wang's yeah. uh, blog post? Jeff Jeffrey Wang, who is a, one of the lead. Of, mm, now is a PM, I think, but he no, he's actually a, he's wrote a, a lot of engineering code. manager. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, but but you know, beside it, now you when you use the word manager, you think okay, he's not no no he's code. No, no he he's writes writing code. code. <laughs> <laughs> he writes code, and he's good at it. And and uh, he created a small tool uh, that is available on GitHub, which is a completely separate tool today, which uh, just captured this event and shows the the content. 
Thank you, Alex. I will be honest, I am thinking about how to properly display that information in uh, DAX Studio because when you have a simple measure is one thing. When you have a complex calculation, you enter in a completely different dimension and it's not easy to understand the output of that function, to be honest. Um, it's much easier to use the DAX debugger in Tabular 803, for example. And I'm writing, I'm, I'm working on an article explaining the differences and show, I, I'm just, you know, this is just something I, I was doing this morning. I was trying to prepare the, 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 the demos for that. So, short answer to the question. No, today we don't have anything uh, implemented in DAX Studio. You should take a look at the blog post of, uh, uh, written by Jeffrey Wang and in the future probably we will, we will add something in DAX Studio. Awesome. Chris, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I saw those three hearts in the chat and I thought we got hit by another bot. Um, so just saying, <laughs> you, you made my heart <laughs> skip a beat. <laughs> oh, now everyone's going to do that. It's going to drive me nuts. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Sergey. Uh, Marco, recently on Twitter, you commenting the technique of returning a table in an if statement. Uh, you pointed out that there were other techniques. What are they? Well, no, tech, so, so it, uh, uh, Patrick, we need a $1. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> technically, so let me just recap. So because the, 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 the question always is, uh, so it, it, uh, the if statement in DAX, only returns a scalar value, a string or a number or a date. Um, if you want to create a conditional statement that returns either a, a table or another table, even though those two tables have the same shape, the same number of columns and the same data type of the columns, uh, if cannot be used because if cannot return um, uh, um, a table. So the techniques that we can use basically are all in the same uh, super set of techniques where we create a huge table, but we filter the rows only of the, of the part of the table that we want. So technically we union the rows coming from two different tables and then we filter only the rows that we need. Now, when I mentioned different techniques, it was specific to the, the code written so that we can try to be more efficient in creating the two tables. Because if I populate a table, imagine you have table A and table B, you, you, you union A and B, and then you filter only B. You can do that, but it would be smarter to structurally combine A and B together, but when you prepare A, you filter A up front so that you don't have to filter A later and possibly you don't have to materialize data. So my comment was specific to the code used, not to the general idea of the technique. The general idea is the same, we can just optimize the implementation. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, there's nothing more to say got, on that. Hey, hey, you got anything to add? Uh, oh Adam? You got anything? <laughs> no. Uh, sorry, I'm just responding to uh, Chatmaster C in the chat about her hearts. <laughs> you broke a Adam's hearts. broken. Adam's completely broken. broken over there. He's, I'm not broken. <laughs> Fine. All right. Uh, so Fernando has a question we, we kind of already talked about again, but because it's important, I'm going to bring it back up. Uh, hey, Alex, can you drop the link again of how to the donate page for DAX Studio? Um, just so we've got that. Fernando, I think you probably saw it, but I just want to get it out there again. Yeah, it's important. Yep. So I was paying attention, yeah, yeah. Fernando. I can listen to Marco and, and <laughs> nitpick on my wife at the same time. It's fine. All right, uh, so uh, Chris Finland coming in again. Uh, where is the multi-value parameter support? <sighs> I don't remember if it is already implemented. My question remember. to that, Chris, would be when was the last time you used X Studio? Yeah, because there. I Let mean, you check. can, Chris. You can use the function. You can use the DAX function to do it. I thought. I think it's so already much. supported, but I'm not sure. Let me check. Yeah. Um, 
It's it's um, it's it's not that important, Marco. Okay. <laughs> he was I trolling. Think, I think uh, <laughs> he was trolling. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't remember, but uh, probably uh, I don't remember. So okay, the, the, we'll just say it is and move on. Um, okay. <laughs> all right, uh, Akil's got a question. Uh, why is creating calculated column not allowed in Report Live connected to a data set? Technically, it should be possible with define column converting live to DQ just for a new column seems too much. So the question is about using a statement. Define column is a statement that you can use in a query to create a, a query calculated column that is uh, that that semantically works as a calculated column that is stored in the model, but technically is evaluated at one time when you run the query, even though the result is the same for all the rows of the table. This feature has been implemented for uh, the support of the composite models. And in theory, it works, assuming that the remote data set where you send the query support that syntax. Now, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're connected live to a Power BI data set and or uh, to a Power BI, sorry, analysis, uh, recap. So if you connect service. live to analysis, to a Power BI data set published on Power BI service or to analysis services on Azure, it should work. If you connect on premises on analysis service 2022, it probably should work, yeah. but yeah, 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 analysis yeah. services 2019, it definitely doesn't work or earlier versions. Nope, 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 nope. Yep, yep. Well, because, but then 2022, we just introduced composite model support in 2022 yeah. for, yep. for uh, analysis yeah, services. Yeah, yeah. 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 Analysis service. I'm sorry, yep. Microsoft just did. Microsoft yeah. just introduced. Not Patrick. <laughs> Not Patrick. Not Patrick. No. Patrick had nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Thomas is asking Are there any updates on DAX measure dependencies? I don't know what you would want to see there. So uh, I think that the, um, so the question is very generic. So let's, uh, let me describe the, the possible uh, real request. So uh, DAX Studio doesn't have a feature specifically designed to show the measure dependencies. Technically, when you use uh, the, uh, there is a feature to, to include in the query the definition of a measure and all the dependent measures so that you see all the dependencies in, in a single query and you can change them and you can see the side effects. This has been already there with some bugs that we try to fix, but it's there. Uh, another feature that, you, that, that people ask is just looking at the, like a graph of the dependencies of the measure, regardless of their use in a particular query. There is a data management view that does this, and of course you can query that view with Tax Studio. Uh, we don't have a specific feature to show this in a graphical form, and Tax Studio doesn't have a feature that analyzes the dependencies on the report. So the report is not uh, known by Tax. Tax Studio only knows the, the the data model, not the report. Potentially, we could do something like that in Bravo in the future but uh, it's not there yet. So it's something for something after version one that has not been released yet. Nice, nice. You should nice. get to work, Marco. Oh, what are you doing all day? But, but, but if I'm just looking at the <laughs> model though, Marco, if, yeah. if I'm just looking at, if I'm trying to figure out what columns are used in the model, Bravo does that today, right? Um, yeah, Bravo kind of sort of, only little, shows you the columns that are used in any DAX expression of the model. So you yeah, cannot yeah, yeah, say, yeah. I want to know which uh, measures are consuming this column. But technically, this is possible using the data management view. So it's, we, you, we don't have a feature to do that, but, but there is a data yeah, management yeah. view that provides you that information. You just don't have a nice yeah. UI to consume that information. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Mr. Paul Turley, are there any <clears throat> plans to license DAX Studio 3 or will it remain free? I think we kind of covered this with the sponsorship and... It's free forever. 
Well, so, I would say it's, uh, it's not really the 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 decision of no, the people no. on this stream. <laughs> so <laughs> the let me add, so I want to provide a, a complete answer about that. Deck Studio has uh, Deck Studio is free and open source today. Yes, which means that whatever has been written until today can be used by anywhere. The the MIT license is pretty open and. Anybody can create a branch and create their own version of Studio. Now, as long as we are able to have uh, someone like Darren working a lot of time on Studio and uh, support with the minimal sponsorship that we have, if you look at the money donated by year, as of today, it's impossible to hire any developer. Okay, so we have some fun, but we don't. We cannot do much with that money. We, we certainly cannot find a developer and hiring, or her. Which means that, it, as of today, I don't see any possible different business model. But imagine that in two years the recession kills a lot of company, including our ones, and Dax Studio doesn't have funds, and Darren changes the job the product could die or uh, maybe another company could say oh this is interesting we could you know we could make it we, we could create a commercial version i i don't think that the, the, the license has some implication but technically a company could do that tomorrow N not us i mean anyone yeah from my point of view i can tell you we have no interest in creating a commercial version of the studio because uh, we need that studio for our training, for our yes. activity, for our job, so it would be a conflict I, of interest. I would say, Patrick, so and make I sense. need it for our job too. So I'm like, it's it's a must-have um, when we're doing optimization or anything like that. So this is the situation. I, yep. I I would say no. I would say yes. It will remain free forever. Yeah. But I want to be realistic, right? So over a long term. Some, nobody can guarantee that in 10 years there will be the yeah. same development team that is developing DAX Studio. Whereas Microsoft can guarantee we provide you support for 10 years. We cannot. But, and I mean, you know, when the, when the AI DAX comes out, I mean, we won't even need it. So it's... Right? I mean, there's, anyway. <laughs> oh, Marco didn't even bite on that one. Oh. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sunil... <laughs> uh, what, what, what premium capacity to choose would get your dollar ready, Patrick, uh, what premium capacity to choose with report size of eight gigabytes. So I think you mean the data set size of eight gigabytes and 20,000 users consuming the report, uh, three pages has an import mode. So it's hundred percent import eight gig, 20,000 users. First off, it depends. Marco go. I have I have an answer. <laughs> I have an answer too. Which is not uh, give give your answer. I don't want to you know you you are a person from Microsoft. This is better than me. Then I can. No, they're, they're not going to like my answer. No, no you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to like my answer. No, my answer. So my answer is is just technical. So yeah, no, my so is mine. <laughs> as of today, you can build you can get the, the larger capacity, but the real issue is that your model will be only on a single node. So if you really have 20,000 concurrent users, you have a problem, uh, which will be solved because I think that Microsoft will probably release the, the, the scale out is feature. Coming. It's coming. In, uh, yeah. For so premium. When the scale out feature is there, solution End of the year. December. available. Release, release wave says so, December. OK, so when that feature is, is available, your problem will be solved. And of course, at that point, you can count how many nodes I need to do blah, blah, blah. But as of today, uh, you, your problem is that the, the larger capacity provides you more RAM. I'm not sure you, you get also more CPUs, right? Yes. We, 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 yes. So, okay. It, so, it potentially you can, so you can check what, which, uh, w oh, depending on the number of concurrent users, you have to scale up. <sighs> Uh, the, the, the highest level that you need to support the concurrent users you have. So 20,000 users doesn't mean much. It means it, it matters how many concurrent users you have. Yes. And that, that was Good one of the time. points I was going to, yeah, I was going to make that point also is when you say 20,000 users, how many are hitting at the same time? It's not all 20,000. 
And so that's really where your usage and concurrency comes from. And so you got to think about think time, which most people don't do when they think about concurrency. Um, so when, when people hit the report and you, you slice that pie chart, they take a little bit to, to go and, and look around and see what changed and then they'll go click again. And so there's, it's, they're not hitting, it's not all these queries right at the same time. So that's something you got to think about. Um, the, the other, th I'll, I'll, Patrick, what do you, what are your thoughts before I go off on? No, 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 no. It, it's concurrency, but I wouldn't even think about this, all this stuff right here, to be honest with you, 20,000 users, a gig model, make sure everything's fast before you go out. Right. You, you, yeah. everybody, Single user everybody should be the, fast puts, before anything else. Well, yeah. everybody puts cart before the horse, right? I don't care about any of this stuff. If the model's slow, the model's slow. And so yes. you could talk about 20,000 concurrent users, 5,000 concurrent users. The very first thing you need to do is make sure you have an optimal model with optimal DAX. I yep. don't care about all this stuff, right? We got to yep. think about that first. Then we start doing load tests and capacity planning. Just get a P2. Just get a P2. Start from there. Do some load tests and we figure it out. It's easy. Don't so, worry about it. So, two customer stories. Uh, the first one, uh, they were they were coming at me saying, "Look, in the service, this this report is really slow. We go to the third page of the report and it's just slow, and then we get out of memory errors." And I'm like, "Okay, can you send me the Power BI desktop file?" And it was 100% import. They actually they sent me the whole thing. Um, the the Power BI desktop file was one gig on disk so it was just a one gig power bi desktop file they sent it to me um they were running on a p1 or a p2 uh and uh my laptops are usually a beast of a machine i i can't remember the last time i didn't have a laptop that has 64 gig of ram in it um so i've got a lot of ram in my laptop um, most people only have like 16 gig in their laptop if that so it's you know they can't test these things so i just pulled up power bi desktop before i did anything else just let it idle out and just opening the power bi desktop file single user power bi desktop on my machine it leveled out i think at around 12 gig in memory i'm like all right you're already out of a p1 patrick how, how did you know that how did you know it leveled task out manager at... i was looking at task mm, manager okay well everybody doesn't know these things you just start talking know. about this stuff Everybody's i like, did a video <laughs> on it I did a video. Hey, Marco and I are going to do a video. You guys got to stay tuned. We're going to dig into this even more. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. shameless plug, shameless right. plug, shameless plug. All right. Please. So, so I went to page three, which they told me <laughs> that was the problem. So I go to page three, memory leveled out at 48 gig. Yeah. On a one gig on disk model. So I'm just like, what do you, and then we go through and the things we were talking about, like, oh, I'm using, you know, a calculate table inside of measures and like just bloated the junk out of the model. It was just, it was insane. Um, and so I just went back. I'm like, guys, this is, this doesn't even work for one user, let alone, you know, go into the service, fix it in desktop first, mm -hmm. fix it in desktop. Um, yes. so the, the second story I have is a, uh, a model that was 200 meg that had a single table with about a million rows in it and it was chewing the cpu of a p5 single model what and there were only what? maybe a hundred users and it's it's killing the cpu of a p5 so it depends <laughs> Right, so it's you've got to optimize your models. You got to make sure that it's clean and fast, and and I could reproduce that on my individual machine. So it's like you've got to make sure it runs for a single user and runs well. Patrick, did we already? It depends. This did we already? It depends. This one? I don't know, Kevin. Did we? We should have. I know. I don't remember. Yeah, process. Remember. Chris Jones saying process explorer. You can use process explorer too. That's a sysinternal yeah, tool. Use process explorer. Yeah, it's good though. <laughs> Fernando use Malik. They're... I like that. I like oh, that. Malik okay. and Alec. Three. Okay, Kevin. Okay. Yes, yeah, okay. so we're three. All right. Cool. All right. Anyway, we are over time. There were so many other questions oh. in the queue. What? But go. You're about no. to do it. You're no, about to do it. Oh. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this out. I, I got stuff for the close all out. Right. It's all good. Um, Marco. Yeah. Any closing words of wisdom? Enjoy Duck Studio. Enjoy Dax, dude. Make sure you it's install it. I, so I did see uh, Daff, Daff in the chat was was uh, sad because you know Daff can't use Dax Studio. His organization doesn't allow it. So I feel for you. Um, That's uh, I. Sorry, I have they to can say use this. Studio. Uh, the, I I don't know 
how many PMs are online today, but uh, I continue to ask to Microsoft or ask Microsoft to clarify the message toward external tools mm. and open source tools and all the stuff that are around because it's not enough what they did so far is something but is definitely not enough they can do a much better job to help their customers to be more productive that's what i can say yeah <laughs> Chris Wagner said, uh, just tell him it's Chris Wagner approved. <laughs> I don't know that that's going to work, Chris. Um, uh, all right. Uh, uh. Uh, so uh, one thing before we close out, just letting you know, uh, we've been talking about it a bit, but we are going to conferences. Um, so Marco, what, what's the next conference you're going to be at? Actually, I don't have speeches at conferences this year. Uh, I will be at the post-summit probably the first day because mm -hmm. I, I will be in Seattle those days, but I don't have speeches luckily. So I, I will just enjoy the conference and I will move to, actually I have a few user groups meetings in Australia when I, I will visit Australia in September and o o October. I go in Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney and I have user groups in those three cities. So they are sleeping nice. probably from Australia now, but if you look at the, if, if you watch the, the, the recording, uh, watch out the, your, your local Power BI user group. I will be there someday. Nice. Nice. All right. And we'll see you at Pass Data Summit. So I'm looking yeah, forward to that. Yes. What about Let's Alberto? Where's Alberto going to be? Alberto is going to build on at the Power BI next. What, what is the name? I don't remember. The conference that you, you have now in, in September. in um, it's the Lego where, one. Where they have Lego. In Denmark. Denmark. What is it? Denmark, Power yes, BI. Uh, I don't remember the name. Like the day, but it's sold out. So or... next step, next, next step, step, next step, next step. Yes. And the conference is sold out, so you don't yeah. have a ticket. You cannot go. Yeah. And then he will be at the Pass Summit, and he has a precon, and he has a, a session, too. so he will be there for four days. Nice. I didn't think he was going to go to Pass. Nice, awesome. All right. Well, we'll see both of you there then. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so Patrick and I, uh, Patrick, where where are you going to be next? Uh, Orlando. Sunny Ooh. Orlando at the Power Orlando. Platform Conference. We actually have a Sunny. video somewhere. I saw a video. Yes. Hey, Alex, you can you drop Alex that video? video? It's on the Power BI yeah. YouTube channel. So Alex yeah. Powers, Patrick, and I are going to be doing the post-con for uh, the day after Dashboard in a Day. It is so lit <laughs> that it has to be the day after the conference. The day after <laughs> Dashboard in a Day. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Also, uh, we are going to be hosting with BI Focal and Marquee Insights uh, a social hour on Tuesday afternoon. And so uh, if you want, uh, Jason put together a lovely sign up form. So please uh, put some interest, uh, fill out the form. Uh, I did say lit. Um, <laughs> I did. I did. Um, so if you are, if you're going to be at the conference and you do want to join us for the social hour, please put, uh, fill out that form. We're going to send out info on like where it is and all the details. Um, so just, just let us know there is, there is a limitation on space. Um, and so this is also kind of giving us a heads up for like how many people are going to be there. So, so yeah. thank you, Jason, for, uh, <laughs> Wow, I didn't realize that would have that kind of reaction. <laughs> you said you said lit. You're gonna yeah. be lit. You'll be turned up. You'll be Adam's lit. gonna be turned up. Adam, yeah. Adam, turn up. Day <laughs> after dashboard in a day. It's lit. Come join us. Uh, <laughs> turn up. Uh. <laughs> so and then after that, after that, I'm gonna be here in Atlanta where, and I'm doing something way different. I'm not doing Power BI. I'm gonna show you how to build a modern lake house data warehouse at data saturday october awesome. 1st here in atlanta awesome. so stay tuned for that that's gonna nice. that's gonna be fun that's gonna be fun marco's yeah. interested in that yep <laughs> I, I, I would like to watch but i i, I would not be, won't be there. So. um you just yeah. call me call me up marco i'll show you call me up of and then uh, of course yep and then after that uh, uh we're gonna be in belgium and the netherlands for data minds connect and yeah. Techorama north mm. uh, netherlands um, so yeah. we'll be there and then uh, back at past data summit in Seattle. So 
All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marco, again for uh, for being with us. You're uh, welcome. It was a pleasure You're as welcome. always. Was... Pleasure as always. My pleasure too. Yeah. It was uh, lit, Marco. It was, it was lit. lit. It, it was, was lit. lit. It was lit. <laughs> Gosh, that's going to be a thing now, isn't it? Uh, next Saturday, next Saturday, Alberto Cairo on the stream. So we're going to be answering your visualization questions. So get them ready. Um, so I don't bring your Dax question to Alberto Cairo because he's probably not going to be able to no, answer it. No, um, no, just, no. It's, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for being here, Marco. Have a great afternoon and weekend. Everyone else, have a great rest of your weekend. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>